For me, it wasn't necessarily a successful businesswoman. It was someone who's the best version of themselves. So basically someone who is an incredible sister, friend, daughter, mother, team player, team leader. Okay, let's, let's um, in business, what are the, the top tips right now uh, that you would give to a young woman out there? For me, it's essentially three lessons that I always share. Top business tips to rapidly prototype any ideas you have and iterate towards perfection over time. Don't worry about being perfect at the very beginning, just get started. To reach out to your role models. When I started Mogul, I had no one in the tech industry, so I reached out to 50 of my role models and each one by one did so very strategically until they all became our investors, advisors, and mentors and collaborators from the founders of Comcast to the founders of Match.com and ultimately heads of Hearst, MTV, NPR and more. And then finally, to always be kind and authentic and generous. Those are definitely the values that we espouse at Mogul, hence why no one ever resigned from Mogul in the first four years of Mogul. And as a result of why I'm here today, from giving back to young women all around the world so that they can have a better life too. Is the book specifically, um, does it cater to millennials, millennial women? And how is that advice different from advice to millennial men or non-millennial women? Great question. So it definitely does cater most to millennial women, although it's applicable to all, of course, since many of the things I share are universal truths. However, it does apply to mostly millennial women because on the millennial side, there's a number of things I discuss that I think will be very applicable to our generation, such as side hustles. I talk about how I not only had a job at CBS, for example, during the day whereby I was one of their youngest directors overseeing various properties across the U.S. from a business development and strategy standpoint, but at nights I would take on different side jobs, such as with the vice mayor of Beijing at night, collaborating on a venture that bridged the cultural gaps between US and China. And even further into the nights, I would produce feature films and documentaries with A-list talent and Hollywood. So I had all three jobs at once, and that's very millennial. And then in terms of women, it definitely applies to millennial women because ultimately a number of the things I share along the way are things I did in order to overcome our context today. Women right now represent just 10 to 15% of share of voice globally. It's going to take us until 2085 to reach parity with men in top leadership positions, which is why Mogul actually collaborates with tons of Fortune 500 companies in order to present jobs from them to our millennial women on the platform. And then finally, there's over 62 million girls around the world who are prevented by their societies from attending schools, which is why in the book, I share a number of things that we do and that everyone can do to help contribute their voice towards this um, action needed. One of the things you talk about is uh, discovering your passion early on and, and not therefore settling for something that seems like a great job initially but, but isn't really what you want to do. Do you think too many people uh, don't, don't, aren't ambitious enough to, to seek their, their job they really love? It's not that they're not ambitious enough, but that they don't realize that they deserve a kind of life whereby their career and their, their life can be one and the same. Um, that's what I see uh, for myself is that I was able to do something I was passionate about every single day and everyone always says I'm one of the few people that seems to always get out of bed so excited to get to work and because for me it's not work and so I think it's not about ambitious but just knowing that um, you deserve an incredible life and career that is one and the same. You said a lot of Millennials do the side hustle which maybe is counter to what people think about Millennials in terms of you know, having all those jobs, and, but, and also being able to pay the bills while you're pursuing what you love. I mean, do you, what do you think are the sort of the, the stereotypes of millennials that the number one that you have to get past? It might be that millennials might unfortunately be stereotyped as being self-entitled and therefore feel like they deserve well, to do Well, that's tricky because you just said you have to believe that you deserve that dream job. And you just said one of the stereotypes is that millennials feel uh, maybe perceived as entitled. So that's, <laughs> those things go. It can be conflicting at times, yeah. but in the context in which I'm sharing, it's not so conflicting in that when I was sharing it as in terms of why people are stuck in a very linear career, it's because they might feel like they don't deserve that kind of life whereby, again, they can do something that they love and they're passionate about because they might not earn money that way. Um, whereas the stereotype is the opposite. Right. So it's, yeah, 